Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be continuing on with the JavaScript challenge and we're going to be doing flatten deeply nested array. So in this problem you're given a multi-dimensional array and a depth and you want to turn a flattened version of that array. A multi-dimensional array is a recursive data structure that contains integers or multi-dimensional arrays. A flattened array is a version of that array with all of the subarrays removed or some interplaced with the actual elements of the subarray. The flattening operation should only be done if the current depth of nesting is less than n. The depth of elements in the first array are considered to be zero, and we need to solve it without using array.flat. So, so array.flat actually does do it for you, and I think you can give it a depth as well. Okay, so let's go through these examples. So for the first one, they say that a depth of zero will always result in the original array because we're not doing any flattening. So if you get an array and you get n zero, you should not be flattening any elements. For the second example, as you can see here, um, a lot of it does get flattened, right? So this four, five, six gets flattened because it's one level deep and n equals one. But here, the seven, eight gets flattened, but this nine, 10, 11 part does not get flattened because this is two levels deep. So anything two levels deep, you should just not flatten. And then the 12 gets flattened and then 13, 14, 15 gets flattened. Okay, and then finally for the third example, this is one, two, three is one level deep. This four, five, six is one level deep. And then the 7, 8, 12 is one level deep, and the 9, 10, and 11 is two levels deep, but we have a 2 here, so every, the entire thing gets flattened. So we're actually going to focus on this example here, and then we're going to try to figure out, like, how do we do this problem. Okay. So let's actually write down this bottom example, essentially. It's a little laggy today, but it's okay. Okay. Four. Five, six, seven, eight. We have another level, so I'm actually gonna do that with another color to represent another level. So this is gonna be like two levels deep. Nine, ten, eleven. Okay, I'm gonna this. So seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then we're going to 12. I'm going to make this just like this. So I think we have 13, 14, 15 as the last three. Yeah. So let's do that. Okay. All right. So how do we solve this problem essentially? Well, what we're going to do is we're actually going to, it's going to be pretty straightforward, but we're going to need to do it recursively, as they said. And we're just going to need to check what level we're on. So we're going to have a an array that we're going to output to, right? And then we're going to have a recursive method saying like, hey, if we're at an array and we need to flatten it, let's call it recursively. So let's see what that's going to look like. So let's just make an output array here. Like this. Just give it some space. And essentially for every single element, we're going to check the, we're going to check the depth and we're going to see if we need to recurse. Okay. So we are going to start here. And what is like, what is our current depth? So remember n starts at 2. So if n is 2 and we reach an array, then we need to flatten, right? Because we are allowed to flatten. So we're actually going to go into this section here and we're going to start flattening because we are, we're in like a sub problem essentially, right? So if it's this, then, then we're going to, you know, we're going to flatten. And how are we going to do that? Well, it's pretty straightforward. So what's going to happen is we're going to recurse down into here again, but now n is going to be 1. Right? And then we are in this element. So what are we going to be doing? We're going to be recursing, right? So we're going to recurse and then we're going to go into here again and we're going to say, okay, we're here again. What do we need to do? Because because we do have an array and now we are in this, this subsection essentially. So when we are in the subsection and we're trying to flatten and we recursed, now, now the, we're gonna, our array is going to be this, not the whole thing. It's just going to be the small part. So now that our array is a small part, we're going to go through all the elements and we're going to check are they a value or are they an array. And so let's do that. So we're going to check if this one, this one is a value. So we can just, if it's a value and not an array, we can just put it directly. And by the way, we're going to make an output like outside of, outside of our recursive function. And we're always just going to be pushing to this, to this output array here. So, so what did we do so far? So the first element was an array. We recursed into it. So now we're actually, this is like our, 
new sub problem. So now we're going to check, is this first element array or is it a number? It's a number. So we can just push straight away. Now for the second element, array or number, number, push straight away. Now third element, array or number, push straight away. Now we finish that. Now we go back out here. So we recurse out and we're back here and now n equals 2 again. So when n equals 2, we're going to check, is it an array or is it an element? So this is actually an array, right? Like all the way outside. We're going to check, is this thing an array or an element? It's an array. So then we're going to recurse into this subproblem again. Now n is going to be 1. We recurse down. And then we check these elements. This is our subproblem. Are they a, an array or an element? So the 4 and 5 and 6 are going to be elements. So we're going to put those out here. Now we recurse back out, essentially. So we recurse back out here. We recurse back out here when equals 2. Now we check here. Is this an array or an element? It's an array. So we need to do another subproblem. And so the subproblem here is I'm going to move this uh, over here. Okay. So the subproblem is going to be here, and n is going to be 1. And now we are here. So we're in this subproblem. And we're going to check is the 7 an array or an element? Well, it's an element. So we're going to print it 8, element. But now we get to this 9. And this 9 is an array, right? Like this thing is an array. This is not an element. And so how do we, because essentially we're not, we're not really checking the nine, we're checking this whole thing, right? Same thing for these. When we go here, we're not, we don't see this one, we see this array and we see this array. And now here, when we recursed, like our first recursion went into here, but we, the, when, in this sub problem, you know, when you go in this, these indices, these are numbers, but now here, when we go here, this is actually an array because we're checking this element here. And so for that element, we need to recurse one level deeper. So let's do that, right? We need to recurse one level deeper. And yeah. And so we, we need to actually do that essentially is what we're doing. So we need to recurse one level deeper and let me just double check. Yeah, so in here, we do want to recurse one level deeper because they say that um, the flattening operation should only be done if the current depth of the nesting, nesting is less than n. The depth of the elements in the first array are considered zero. Okay. So yeah, this is two elements deep, essentially. And so what we need to do is we do flatten at zero. So when n equals zero, we, we, we don't flatten, but essentially what's gonna happen here is when we recurse, like for this first example here, when we recurse into these, n's gonna be negative one. And so if n's negative one, then we don't flatten. But in this case, when we recurse, n is gonna be zero, so we do flatten. So I just wanna double check that. So essentially, what I'm saying is we're gonna recurse into this subarray, n is gonna be zero, and we're still gonna flatten because n is zero, right? We're two levels deep, that's fine. But as soon as n is negative one, then we would not be doing any flattening, essentially, is what I'm gonna show you in the code. Okay, so we are, this is a, like our subproblem now. So now we're checking array or element, and we're actually at this 9 now. So 9 is an element, 10 is an element, 11 is an element. Now we're going to come back out. So we are going to come back out over here, right? We, we return, and now we're over here, and now n equals 1 again, right? We're back in, we're back in this loop here, essentially. And so now that n equals 1 again, is 12 an array or a number? It's a number. And now finally we're done with this whole array, so we now we recurse back out. And now n is 2 again. So n is 2. Now we check for this. Is this an array or a number? It's an array. So we need to recurse again. So we're going to recurse here. n is going to be 1 again. And now we're checking elements. So is this 13 an element? Yes, it is. Is this 14 an element? Yes, it is. Is this 15 an element? Yes, it is. And finally, we recurse back out to n equals 2. And now we're done with everything. So that's going to be our algorithm. Let's write it down. So at each point, check if the element is an array or a number. If it's a number, just push to our output. If it's an array, recurse with n minus 1, but if 
n is already less than zero, then just push the array because we only flatten so many levels deep, right? So for this example, um, let me go back here. So in this example, like n is going to be zero. I guess we can really say we can really say we can we can rephrase this. If n is zero and we need to recurse, then we just don't need to recurse, right? Because n is going to be negative one, so we're never going to be pushing anything there. So we can we can rephrase this. So we can say uh, if n is zero. So oops, let me just um, do this. So if n, oh, let's just do some writing, right? So if n equals zero, then just push the array, because essentially when when we are at n equals zero, we don't need to be doing any flattening, essentially. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Because when if we recurse, we're never gonna be we're never gonna be like doing any flattening there. Okay. So that's gonna be our algorithm. If n equals zero, we just push the array because if we recurse and when n equals negative one, we're never gonna be doing anything. Okay. So if it's a number, just push it. If it's an array, we can recurse, but we can just check if n equals zero, then we push the array because at n equals negative one, we're not gonna be doing anything. And then finally, at the very end, all we need to do is return the number, right? So return, the, or not the number, but the output. So we're gonna make an output before our recursive function so we can use it. Okay, and that's that's everything we need. So just put it up here. And so we can make an output in several places. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is just add it. Eh, I guess we can we can make an output here using a closure, right? So we can just say like let result equals this, and let's just return function that will take what exactly? We don't need to take anything. We can just use these things, right? So let's just return a function that will do this, and it will. Actually, we don't want to return a function. We want to we want to make a function, right? And then we want to call it. Um, or we could return it. I think either one is fine. Or what we could also do is we can literally just add the result to the to right over here. That would also be fine. So let's actually do that. So what we're actually going to do is I don't think I showed this before, so let's let's do it this way. So what you can actually do is if you want more variables, like you want some kind of storage without using a closure, what you can actually do is you can just say, you can just have another variable here. You can just say like, let's call this res. And then if you're not passed in a res, you can do this. And then essentially what this will do is this will make a new variable. And then if you're not passed it in, it will create a new one for you. So you could use this kind of, this kind of syntax for a caching as well. So we're going to do this kind of thing. Okay. And so let's go through our cases. So we're going to loop through our array, right? So we're going to go through our array. So for we can just the nice thing also about this problem is the elements in the array, I believe, are just um, numbers. So it's pretty straightforward. It's only numbers and arrays. There's not like objects or anything. OK, so we can just do for let item of R. And then what are our cases, remember? So if array is array of item so if it's if it's an array if n equals zero we don't need to do anything right we can just straight away append that right for this first example even if we do have arrays we can still uh we can still append those like we don't have to do anything so if array is array is item and n is greater than zero then we recurse right so we can say flat um, item n minus one, and then we can pass the result in. Otherwise, my spacing is screwed up, but it's okay. Let's actually try to do this. There we go. Okay, so otherwise we can just push it directly. So then it's just gonna be res.push of the item. And that's uh, pretty close to it, except we need to do one more thing, right? We need to return the result. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's go over it one more time. So if our item is an array, and our n is greater than zero, then we need to recurse and we need to update this n minus one and then we're passing the actual array down. Otherwise, we're just gonna push it because if n is zero, we don't need to flatten. And so, and if we just have a normal number, then we don't need to flatten either, right? So then we return results, let's try it. Okay, okay so that actually does work. And uh, yeah, 
So hopefully you like this problem, and if you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Pretty easy problem, but thanks for watching.